opioid addiction completely consumes your life and at times in that process allows you opportunities to peer into your soul, maybe confront your shadow and come to terms with certain things. On the other hand, benzodiazepine addiction, NX or otherwise, doesn't consume your life. It consumes your soul, throws it in a washing machine, creates the most dysphoric state of being that you can imagine. And there is nowhere to look into or look out of. It's horrifying. Dr. B, Dr. B360, and today I will briefly consider and give you some insights into which is worse, which is, I'm often asked, a benzodiazepine addiction or an opiate addiction. And at the end of this, hopefully, besides being somewhat entertained, you will have some insight, gain some insights, pitfalls to avoid, and things to consider in your own treatment. Let's get started. Uh, you know, opiate addiction is uh, pretty bad. It's bad enough, right? And uh, uh, you know, I just uh, essentially said it can consume your whole life, right? Uh, but, okay, an opiate addiction, it's bad enough, okay? And depending on the severity of someone's addiction, their socioeconomic status, how long they've been addicted, it really takes over everything. But I argue, and I think folks that are in this situation, I would argue that a benzodiazepine is even worse. And interestingly, it is to a great extent a hidden epidemic. You know, a benzodiazepine as gripping and debilitating an opiate addiction can be, as consuming as it is, okay? The benzo takes it to another surreal level of being. It gets into your bones, sort of say, right? Uh, 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 that pill, getting what you need, uh, is beyond life or death. And so it's a different animal completely from the perspective of somebody suffering from the addiction or uh, uh, the substance abuse disposition that they are in. But I think it's got other features that make it more difficult and worse to deal with. In, and that includes wanting to get clean. Yeah. Uh, so as far as dealing with it, a benzodiazepine addiction versus an opiate addiction, a benzodiazepine addiction falls under the sedative hypnotic class of addictions. And that is the only class of addictions that can truly land you in a hospital or kill you. Now, a lot of people seem to misunderstand when I say something like this, okay? Having pain is a reason to go to the hospital. Having a life-threatening clinical state is a real reason to go to the hospital. And that's what I mean by benzodiazepines can truly put you in the hospital and uh, kill you uh, if someone's going through acute withdrawals, all right? That's one feature of the benzodiazepines. Another feature outside of the patient thing is, you know, socially, look, I've been treating not just, uh, well, acute withdrawals I've been treating for 20 plus years, but benzodiazepine has other features that now it's being recognized that seem to really scar people in the long run. Call it what you want, protracted withdrawals, benzodiazepine induced neurological dysregulation, uh, that's another story and I'm going to get into that, but I've been treating that issue for 10 plus years, long before it was popular or people were coming out to talk about it. And you know, it's a nightmare. Okay. And so benzodiazepine has these other features. If someone has to go through the withdrawal stage or the chronic withdrawal stage, although it doesn't apply to everybody, it makes it a lot more difficult to deal with in these situations. So benzodiazepine has a particular offshoot consequence when people try to come off of it that could really be debilitating for years. Let's leave that at that. In general, benzodiazepine has abuse and addiction has been kind of a hidden epidemic and it's occurring all across the board 
with elderly, with young people. And I don't think it's ever been recognized or given the full uh, uh, complement of services that it deserves. And sometimes that's just recognizing how bad a benzodiazepine addiction is. It's withdrawals can be. Some people go into chronic withdrawal states. Another feature of it is this. One thing about opiates versus benzodiazepine is this. We do have good tools, relatively speaking, relatively speaking, for managing opiate addiction and coming off of opiates, medication-assisted treatment. Now, with benzodiazepine addiction, not only is it a monstrosity to deal with, uh, we have pretty good tools, but not as, you know, maybe I'm overstating it, but still not as robust as we do for medication-assisted treatment. You know, essentially, you switch the person to another benzodiazepine most of the time if you are on a short-acting one, which is the one that often causes the problem. So it's not even recognized in the way that it should be. And I think suffering from that addiction you really get insight into it when you're in the treatment phase and the engagement that you have with your patients, uh, you know, the fear in their face, the anxiety, the concern when there is a thought that you're going to change the medication or decrease their medication or take away that medication. I will tell you that in treating uh, benzodiazepine addiction and getting people off of it, many, many people, uh, uh, it's something that the practitioner should understand deeply that this stuff is dug in to the patient's soul. So you need to, as a practitioner, really understand, A, what you're doing in terms of your pharmacology choices and decisions and when, what, where, who. But you need to be able to communicate with the patients in a way that when they come to see you, they have no anxiety or less than they usually do. They have no fears and they have complete faith and trust in you in dealing with that. And, and it, it, it's, uh, very unique feature of benzodiazepine addiction. Now let's make it even worse. You know, I said opiate addiction consumes your life and you peer into your soul every once in a while with opportunities to face your shadow. It's not fun, but it's rough. I said benzodiazepine is consumes your soul and you're just being tumbled around the washing machine and you don't know which way is out, which way is in, or what's going on. I imagine this. There are individuals that have both opiate addiction, serious opiate addiction, and serious benzodiazepine addiction. When you have the two of those, it's almost like the light of your existence in the universe is extinguished. So, those people out there that work with these folks or other medical doctors that work with these folks have to have a lot of sensitivity and a lot of compassion and have to really understand if they're tapering, you know, what to deal with first, you know, the opiates, the benzodiazepines, how to go about this, how much time needs to be used, and you need to make the patient as comfortable as possible because these are universal ethical principles in medicine. Uh, now, I will say that every once in a while, I have a patient that's kind of pushed it too far and is really just getting the medication beyond that point. And, uh, you know, I give multiple chances and eventually cut them off. I have um, two or three of these over the years. I just recently had a couple of them, uh, which was weird. It was a cluster of them. But you, you, a, 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 health doc, a health practitioner needs to use extreme sensitivity and empathy and most importantly, understand how to manage the addiction or multiple addictions 
and create a workflow and an algorithm that fits for that person to get them off. You know, one of my first patients when I started doing just substance abuse addiction medicine, moved away from the hospital, academics, teaching, uh, emergency uh, medicine, uh, uh, was uh, a lady and she came to me with 15 different psychotropics, including high dose opiates, high dose benzos, and soma. And she also came, you know, in this frantic state. And I remember she also had a lot of life consequences from all of this and carried with her four or five different psychiatric diagnoses. You know, I can't quite remember what they are, but there were some personality disorders, mood disorders, bipolar stuff, and she was a wreck. You know, four years later, we had her down to one medication. Yeah, it takes that long. She had moved to Arizona, had a job, was driving, had a savings account. It's a lot of work. And mind you, she was on 14 different medications, 14 or 15, I can't quite remember, but I remember being so proud of myself. It's a lot of work and the practitioners need to exercise exquisite judgment. Uh, so if you are suffering from an opiate addiction, don't add another monkey on your back. If you are using benzodiazepines or suffering from that addiction, get a handle on it. The sooner, the better. It makes a difference. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. It doesn't cost you anything. I'll be able to get more videos out for you. Please, please leave me your comments below. I, I enjoy reading those. I don't always get to respond, but I do enjoy reading those. Otherwise, see you guys soon. Peace.